How many of you all watched The Miracle on 34th Street? Anybody, few of us probably see that. It's kind of a Christmas tradition in a lot of people. We had a bona fide miracle on Dove Court, where I live. A real, genuine, bona fide miracle. Those of you that were here three or four weeks ago, you heard a long, tall, very sad story of Pastor Jim and his Christmas tree lights, trying to get the lights up, how I was under demonic attack, my heart was filled with violent rage, and yet I persevered and got my lights up, but there was one problem. Do you remember what the problem was? Half of them were flashing, half of them were not. And I didn't know why, because they all worked perfectly last year, but I was pressed, I was burdened, and I moved on. We had a really extraordinary Christmas. We just had a great time. We had, uh, you know, when you have teenagers in your home, a lot of teenagers coming in and out of our house. We had a wonderful uh, thanks or Thanksgiving. We had a wonderful Christmas Eve dinner. Maria cooked a great, a great meal, and we exchanged gifts that night, which is the first time we'd ever done that. Usually, we do. We 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 get up early uh, in the morning, and the kids, you know, wake up at the crack of dawn, and they come and they want to to uh, open gifts. And probably those of you that have little ones can remember those days. And our rule was, hey, the sun's at least got to be like peering over the horizon if you're waking mom and dad up. But now that our kids are teenagers, they wake up at the crack of noon, and. <laughs> So some of that, some of that my, my, mystery and intrigue is, is gone. And so we thought, well, we'll just for the first time, we'll open them at Christmas Eve and we can all sleep in. So that's what we did. We just had a wonderful day, Christmas Day, kind of had a jammy day, watched a bunch of movies. Um, my dad got me Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the DVD. You guys remember that movie? How many saw that as, as you were kids? You all remember that? We watched it again. And, and then remembered why we stopped watching it. <laughs> but, but just had this really terrific time. So we finally get all of the teenagers out of our house or put to bed, as it were. And the house is kind of settling down. And Maria is kind of standing out there looking, looking at the... Uh, Looking outside, our neighborhood's very beautiful. It's about 11 o'clock at night, 12, 12 at night maybe. And, and it's just beautiful. There's, there's a blanket of snow everywhere and beautiful lights. And she looks up, she goes, oh my gosh. Jim, come quick, come quick. So I'm, you know, I'm running down thinking that Jesus is coming down for the second time for, you know. So I come down and she says, look. And lo and behold, our lights we're all on. No flashing. The, the, the warfare that happened in the heavenlies as the demon of, of Christmas tree lights that, was, that saw that I was having a hard time and was sent by Satan himself to send me over the top and to fill my heart with murderous rage and had switched one of the light bulbs out to a flasher, God himself sent the Archangel Michael down to intervene and replace that light bulb with the light bulb that did not flash and my lights were working as they were supposed to. Do you remember a few years ago, I think it was 2005, that the Virgin Mary appeared under the bridge, I think it was the Lincoln Expressway in Chicago, do you guys remember that? And, and the faithful came from all over the world to see this. I think this is what's going to happen in my block. <laughs> I think the faithful are going to come from all over the Quad Cities and all over the world to see those lights, which are static, all of them working the way they're supposed to be, flashing, filling my part of the neighborhood, filled full of electric joy so that all can see. I think that's what's going to happen. You know the greatest part of it all? It gives me an excuse not to take my lights down. <laughs> <laughs> 